spent 25 years as a college coach, nine of those as a head coach. During two of those seasons, I was named Coach of the Year in a conference. I had the privilege of coaching in the Pac-12, the Big Ten, the Western Athletic Conference, and the Mountain West, amongst others. Since leaving college coaching, I've moved into the broadcast booth and had the opportunity to take what I learned on the sideline and apply it to broadcasting. Amongst the networks I've worked for are Fox Sportsnet, Comcast Sportsnet, the Mountain Network, and ESPN. Rich Cellini alongside the coach Dave Bullwinkle. We're into March, just two regular season games remain, but a big game for each side for different reasons. No question. In the case of New Mexico, they've got a chance to do something nobody in America's done. Beat the same top 10 team twice, and they've had a lot of close losses in conference play. They're better than the record indicates. In BYU's case, everybody talks about them fighting for the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. First, they got to win here tonight. They can't do what Virginia Tech did, beat Duke and lose to Boston College. The Cougars have to beat the Lobos. The keys to the game are brought to you by Ram, award-winning Ram trucks, plus a new heavy-duty make it one of the most powerful lineups in Ram history. Lobos, no waste of possessions. They uncharacteristically have a high turnover rate. Take care of the ball. Guard the lines. That's the free throw line. Don't let BYU get there. And the three-point arc. BYU outscores teams by 16 tonight, but 14 of those points come at the arcs. The lines. BYU, forget about Saturday. Saturday's gone. Last time they beat San Diego State, what they do? They lost to New Mexico. Forget Saturday and keep Drew Gordon off the glass. He's a heck of a rebounder. When you become too concerned about a big-time score, sometimes you lose sight of the other players. What we're going to see here is Anderson setting a screen for Fredette. When Fredette comes off the screen, both defenders go with Fredette. It opens up Anderson, slipping to the basket. Fredette demonstrates his unselfishness. And look what I got. A dunk. Inside play by the Cougars. On the other side of the court, we see it raining threes by the Lobos. Against the zone, against man-to-man, -man, it's made no difference tonight. The Lobos have been hot from beyond the three-point arc. Four of nine, coach. And Steve Offer uses his fourth timeout, only one left. The sixth man of the game is brought to you by Motel 6, official economy lodging partner of basketball fans everywhere. And this one's a no contest tonight. Demetrius Walker, been sensational off the bench. Well, he jump-started their offense the first half with seven points, getting them back in the game. The second half, he's made some key baskets, including the one we just saw. He's got 14 points in the game off the bench. What a night for Demetrius Walker. All right, coach me up right now. Rams got a four-point lead. Lobos clearly don't need to start fouling yet, but if you're the Rams, what are you looking for in this possession? First thing, you're going to get pressed, right? So you're reminding your inbounds pass. There was the timeout was called after made basket. You can run the baseline. Here we see the reset, the number of timeouts remaining. That's very important. The Lobos only have one. Possession arrow, Colorado State. On a tie-up, hold the ball. Run the baseline to get a better passing angle. Understand that you're going to be trapped. Stay out of the corners. What I say is try to get the ball across the midcourt through the logo, through the Rams' head. Keep the ball in the middle of the floor if possible. But you have not reached the point yet where you're playing the clock. You're still playing the team in the red jerseys. And Colorado State uses a timeout. All right, so I talked a minute ago about running the baseline. Carr did not run the baseline to get a better passing angle. One of the first things you need to do is, if the ball's out of bounds here, run the baseline to make it easier. Put your men up here so they've got room to cut to the baseline. You do not want to catch the ball here because the defense can use the sideline and the baseline as a sixth and a seventh defender. Bring the ball through the logo if you can. You still have another timeout to use if you can't get in bounds. One of the things that hurts the Rams, a lot of times you got a big player, when in doubt you can lob it up and, and you know, like make him go rebound the ball. They don't have that advantage. Like this, they're moving like a, a motion offense and they got Eichmeyer wide open. Eichmeyer has it. Spread the floor, they're through the logo, good. Now, excellent job. Got to know the five counts going. Got to break contact or you get a five count. They're going to trap if you cross. That can't happen. And Doreen Green has to use a timeout. And Coach Fisher will use his final timeout. So let's take a look at what the Aztecs did last time. They set a ball screen, a flat ball screen, and had the guy come off it. Now they're going to be in their press. 
They have two different presses. One they call shadow, where they kind of just kind of a coward's press. They're not going to do that one now. They're going to double immediately. One of the things that Coach Fisher, the younger Fisher, Mark Fisher knows, he knows everything that Creighton uses to get the ball inbounds against pressure. And one of the things that he will do, so we see right here, they will probably face guard anybody that's coming towards the ball, make sure that the ball has to be thrown over the top of you, one man on the ball so it's hard to throw the pass. Now conversely, one of the things that Coach McDermott's telling his player to do is to run the baseline to get a better passing angle. If you can't get it in, you've got an extra timeout. Use the timeout if you can't get it in. Keeping possession of the ball is the most important thing here. Oh, great move by Morris. He has Cox to beat. And he does! Finishes Cox the foul. And a bad decision by Cox. Hey, if you can't get there, it's sort of like defensive recovery is a lot like a retreat in a war. Sometimes you got to retreat and concede something and come back to fight another day. He had to come back and fight another day, not put him on the line. That's coach speak is what that is. And there's Rittenauer continuing his string of three pointers. Four to six. Now I'm not real smart, Bob, but in defensive transition, somebody's got to stop the ball. I have this theory about basketball. The guy with the ball can score. The guy without the ball can't score. Somebody guard the guy with the ball. This Buckeyes team is very good. And an offensive foul is called on the Buckeyes off the inbound play. Vilimir Radinovich setting a screen, and the foul was called. That is his second personal. And earlier on, Jim, you asked a question about Big Ten WCC. This is a foul that's not called in the Big Ten. In the Big Ten, that's just playing basketball. But at the mid-major level, that gets a called a little bit more. Is that at all big level conferences, or does the Big Ten have a reputation for being a little more physical? Well, I'll tell you what, I was coaching in Wisconsin, I wore a mouthpiece on the bench, and I was an assistant coach. Davies, we look at the other end. Let's slow it down here and freeze it right here. You see the ball screen coming, and he's gonna come off the ball screen. That's gonna set up, the help has to come. Do they have to sink? Spot it up in the corner, name in the newspaper. Great job by Tavanari. One of the things he did, I say, as a shooter, you got to do your whole work early. That means get your feet ready, get your wrist cocked, so when the pass comes to you, you can deliver the ball to the basket. He's very good at doing his shot preparation. And the pass was perfect. I don't think people pay enough attention to where the shooter catches the pass. They want it in the slot. That's a great point. You've got to put that pass right in the shooting pocket. Don't pass your teammate out of a shot. So we're going to get here as a full court shot on the Telestrator to show you what USC worked on today. In their walkthrough, they call it the home run play. All right, here we go. Ball's being taken out of bounds here. Run the baseline, get a better clearance. Big comes to here. Throw to him. Wings flatten to the corner. This man comes to here, and they kick back to him for the shot there. So they're looking more for the shot here than the shot in the corner. Most people who run the home run play look for the corner. Coach O'Neill for the kickback. And our time left on our screen is not correct. They have doubled it. There is 1.8 seconds, and that gives enough time to really run that play. Yeah, in addition to running the play, it gives you enough time to have a second pass, okay, after the catch, or one dribble. All right, so here we go. Game on the line, 1.8 remaining. And let's not forget that the Aztecs can still commit a foul yes. and the ball goes out of bounds. So that's what they should look to do immediately. Wesley, there's a home run pass. To Deadman, knocked around, ball out of bounds, game over. San Diego State defeats USC 56 to 54. Thank you for taking the time to look at this demo reel. And should you have an interest in my expertise as a basketball analyst, I can be reached in either of the numbers on the screen.